Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So a few days ago I did a flip through of what I'm calling my Torn Pieces journal. And this was a little journal that I'd made specifically to work in in July. Now it was a very, for want of a better phrase, rustic journal. It was actually kind of crude in terms of its construction. But it was there to serve a purpose for me. You see there that I had sewn in three signatures, but they're not evenly spaced out together. I just eyeballed all of this. Even there you'll see it, it's not even in between the uh, signatures. So I used a variety of pages and I also just did a simple three hole stitch. So a number of you asked if I would show you how I made it and that's what I'm going to do today. So the one that I made was about 13 and a half centimetres, just under five and a half inches across the way at its widest point and around 15 centimetres, which is just under the kind of six centimetres. Obviously the sizes uh, vary of the pages because I simply took torn pieces of paper etc and put them in. So you can see there's the three signatures. Each of the signatures is uh, sewn into a piece of material, a small piece of fabric, and then it's into the actual cover itself. And I did this very rustic stitching with twine on the outside. So I actually made another one of these, which I'm going to use in August. The first one was made for working in in August, and I actually filmed making this. But this one was even more rustic looking. The stitching was totally off in this. And when I watched the film back, I, I, I even had, had, had the film uploaded, but I just felt that it was too untidy to show you. I'd rather kind of show you again, still eyeballing it, but one that's maybe just a little bit better in terms of its finish. Now these journals are not supposed to be precious journals for me, and that's why I put them together in this way. I wanted to carry them about with me, that first one certainly, uh, when I was away from home for a while, and I just wanted to be able to feel that it wasn't too precious if it got kind of banged about and roughed up a bit. So the tools I'll be using are an awl just to make holes, a needle, I have a piece of embroidery floss, scissors simply to cut the floss, and what else? need to try and remember what else. I'm obviously off looking for it at the moment. Yeah, some fabric because again I'll put a piece of cloth just to the inside of the cover just to show you how I did that and various pieces of paper. Now I'm going to speed this up a bit because I was moving slowly through it. But these, some of these are drop sheets, some of them are sheets that I've maybe had in between pages of art journals, there's bits of old envelope, there's bits of old sketch pads, packaging, really just lots and lots of torn pieces. So I have a couple of bigger pieces there and what I'm thinking is I will use one of those for the journal. They're also slightly heavier weight, it was heavier paper, but also because of the amount of paint that had been dropped on them, it made them nice and thick. So, you know, I'll decide which one I want to use as the cover. So I want to try and keep it roughly the same size as my first one and just kind of looking at how those various pieces will fit in. Now the thing about these journals is they're all going to turn out slightly differently because I'm using different paper, I'm using different things inside. But I can't stress enough that this was about making a journal that was not going to be precious in terms of its its materials in terms of the supplies used and it was really just a journal that I could work in as and when I had time and it was more about a journal just for kind of expressing different feelings at the time that I was using it. So you see there all I'm doing is ripping the cover I'm not even cutting it with scissors I'm simply ripping it down to get it roughly to the size I want. Now this particular piece of paper that I decided to use was a little bit troublesome because it already had a solid 
line in it had obviously been folded and it's not where I wanted the kind of fold for it so it, it knocks out my stitching a little bit again but that's okay because like I say it's not precious. So now I'm just looking at how that piece of material will fit in it. It's a little bit big on both sides. I could have easily sewn it in at that side but I'm going to cut a bit off because I'll use these scraps that come off probably other places in the journal as I'm creating in it. So I pull those off, get it to roughly the size that I want. It's going to fit in quite nicely. And now what I'm going to do is just to start go, going through my paper and folding these up and I'll make them into signatures. Now in my original journal I had three signatures and there were six pieces of paper in each. So those six pieces will be doubled. So my idea was that that would give me more than enough pages to work in on a, in a month. So just doing that very quickly. Some of them already had kind of fold lines in them. If they weren't centered, that didn't matter because if you've seen the original journal I did, then I actually had some pages that were folded over within the journal itself. And you see some of the pieces of paper are, are very tattered. And again, that was the look I was going for. So I think when I described this journal originally on Instagram, I said that my torn pieces journal was about bringing together torn pieces and fragments of junk, fabrics, fibres, art and life. And that when completed, I would look back at how they all blended together or not. And certainly with my first journal that I did the flip through of, I was pleased when I look back, it, it did hang together well. So here I am, I'm about to put the first signature into the journal. Now I've still kept this on speed because I was working very slowly. And uh, I think even here at double speed you can still see what I'm doing. So basically I'm just trying to line it up with the kind of centre of my background paper and my piece of material. And I'm trying to make sure that the papers are together in such a way that I manage to get at least one hole into them. And for that reason I'm going to start with the centre hole. So I'm just using the awl to push from the inside to the outside. I'm then just going to move that up a bit. I don't want it too close to, to the edge of all the papers, so that's probably about an inch in from, from the edge of the outer cover. Now you see there, because I'm not holding the papers in place, they do move a little. Uh, I have some papers in some of the journals that now have several holes in them. Not bothering, but I'm just showing you here that if you just take your awl or whatever you're using, you can line them all up again from that centre hole. I then go down to the bottom and again roughly one inch from the bottom I'm just going to push through and create my third hole. So you can see that going right through there. So I now have my three holes that will allow me to do almost a figure of eight type stitch to hold the signature in. So I'm cutting a piece of floss about twice the length of the book and all I'm going to do now is to put a little bit of glue on the end of the floss because it's terrible for starting to fray and makes it difficult to, to put into the needle. So I'm just putting that on, I'll squeeze it together with my fingers. I don't really even need to let it dry but that will just allow me to get it right through the needle. Now you can really start with any hole when you're doing this and you can start from the inside or the outside. I'm going to do it from the outside but I'm also going to start in that centre hole because I want to get all the papers anchored to begin with. So the way I'm going to do it, I'm just checking that I'm leaving a tail at the back there because I don't want to pull the thread all the way through and all I'm going to do is take the papers one by one. Now usually when I'm making journals I would have everything held in place to make it easier to go through. But because I'm, I'm not doing that, because I'm just eyeballing everything, I'm just simply going to thread them through 
one at a time. So once I've got those in place, making sure I've still got my tail on it, and then I'm going to go down to the bottom hole. And you can do it either way, you could go to the bottom or you could go to the top, it doesn't matter. But I've gone to the bottom, and again, I'm just going to look to thread it through them all. Now I discovered in a moment that I'd actually left a page out, but I'll add that into another signature. So now that I've got it there, I'm just pulling on them both, just making sure that it's tight in the middle. If you pull too tight, you are at risk of tearing the paper. But again, I'm not worrying too much about this particular journal. So what I've done here is I've gone back through that centre hole and I'll now go up to the top and I'll just catch all the toe, all the holes sorry, at the top. Now where some of the papers have paint on it, it's sometimes difficult to, to see exactly where the hole is, so it can sometimes take a second. And all I'm going to do now is to, to tie that off. I think I put two knots on it, but I then go back and put a third one on later, because uh, one of the things with the other journal I made, the second one, was that the threads actually came undone. So I've got my first signature in, I realise I've left that bit of paper out, but I'm just going to add it into to another signature. And what I'm going to do with this signature is just to place it in front of that first one. And I'm doing this in exactly the same way. So lining, lining it up with my outer cover and the piece of material and I'm just going to push the three holes in again. Now because I added in that piece of paper that I'd left over from the first one. I could actually see where the holes were in that one. So it acted almost as a, a kind of template. Threading up in exactly the same way. Now the only thing with this is that my fingers did get a bit sticky and when I was trying to then take the thread out I was pulling it back out because the thread was sticking to my finger. But eventually I get it in. So again I'm going to start with the centre hole and from the outside. So just checking to see where that is. Going through and again I'm just going to feed the papers on more or less one by one. You'll see that isn't quite in the centre. I'm not worrying because once it's in the book it will be pulled into place. And you'll see that some of these pieces are actually quite crumpled and they, to my mind, just add to that kind of rustic effect. Again, I'm going to go to the bottom and feed all the papers onto my needle. Now, I could have spent time measuring this all out. I would normally do that with journals. Well, I do eyeball them a lot, but uh, if I'm making journals to sell, I would take greater care than I did with this. But, you know, I'll keep going back to the fact that this journal was there to serve a particular purpose. And I didn't mind the fact that it was looking very crude as I say in terms of the, the way it was finished off. My first one certainly did serve its purpose and in fact so much so that's why I've decided that I'm probably going to try and do one for each month for at least the remainder of this year or until I get fed up with them. So again just going to tie it, always just pulling my other threads out the, the way to make sure that I don't tie it into the wrong thing. Making sure that they're as taut as can be and just putting a few knots to stop it from moving. Now you can also put a bit of glue onto that if needs be to stop it. So I'm looking at this and I'm seeing that in the middle of the two signatures there's actually quite a gap. I had intended to put the last signature behind those two but I'm actually now just going to fit it right into the middle and again I'm going to go through 
the same routine. So I'll just speed this bit up a little bit more. So exact same process again, the three holes. And I'm just checking here to make sure that I'm getting it kind of in between the other two signatures. And again, double the length. And then I'll take my needle and go from the outside. So as you can see there, I'm right in the middle of those two signatures because there was space. So again, just feeding them on. Getting them centered, going down to the bottom hole going all the way through. Now it's a bit tighter down that bottom bit, but it will be fine. Back through the middle hole, that one went through reasonably easy. But just making sure that I tighten my threads as I go into the top. Then it's a case of again just tying that off, making sure I push all the other threads out the way. So again you'll see with this that the stitching is not accurate, it's slightly different lengths, but I am absolutely fine with that. So just giving it a quick check over and what I'm going to do now is the pages that hang out the sides I'm just going to fold over. So those pages will be doubled over in the journal. And I think that just adds a bit of interest to the journal rather than having everything the exact same size. So pages are all very different in terms of, of size, in terms of the material that they are. So I'm now just going to put the bit of kind of stitching on this. Now if you wanted you could take that corner off, that was a bit, I noticed it was, it was quite thin so I figured that if I started to poke holes in it it would probably just tear anyway. And in fact there's a bit does tear. But again all I'm going to do is take my all and just punch a few holes into it. Now I'm using quite a heavy duty twine for this so I certainly didn't have a needle that was big enough so I just thread it through by hand. Get it in the first hole there and I simply tie a knot in it to hold it. And all I'm going to do now is start to thread it through the other holes. Now as I said this bit of paper is a little bit thin there and you'll see that it does tear so I swithered about just carrying on with it but then decided that I was actually going to glue on another bit of paper because that would probably just tear through at some point. So all I do is take that corner that I'd already torn off just get some of the same glue and this is just a fabric glue, it's just what I had to hand and I just stick that on. So get the glue off my hands, I punch through it again. It's not entirely dry at this point so I just go kind of carefully. Now you can also put the glue onto the end of the twine like this. I was trying to save time by not doing so but you'll see the twine also starts to unravel a bit and it just requires a little bit of patience to, to get it done. So I'm being careful not to pull this through too tight because if it was too tight then you know the chances are that it would actually rip the paper. In the end I cut that bit off that's frayed because I know that I've got more than a, 
a big enough piece of twine to, to go through so I, I just cut the end off and then finish feeding it through all the holes. And again when I get to the end I simply tie a knot in it. Now that's the basic journal done but what I decide to do here is just to go on and do a bit more on the cover. I just want to start to, to decorate it. And you'll see that the others I'd collaged on it, I'd used washi tape. I'm going to start with this by just using some white paint. I just wanted to knock back the colour a bit. Now the white paint actually started to, to take on a kind of purple colour. I think this had been a drop sheet that I'd used maybe some distress spray ink or something at some time so this will actually help seal that in so you know I didn't mind and then I'm just using my thumbnail just to put some marks in it. So I decide here with the others I've been using uh, simply a glue stick but because this was wet I decided to just use some gel map medium just to start to put the collage down. And the gel matte medium will also help seal in the, the Distress spray ink that was clearly on this. Now I might go on at some point and do even more decoration on the cover or I might just leave it as is. So the second journal that I'd made I was going to actually use for August but since I hadn't started in it yet I might just use this one and then I can show you where I get to with it. I might show me working on a couple of pages in it. I mean the, 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 the pages within the first one were very intuitive, they weren't planned in any way and I guess it would depend how I feel when I, I sit down with the journal, whether I kind of feel like filming, but I might just film a couple with it and then I certainly do a flip through at the end of the month. So I'm just taking a few different washi tapes here, just sticking them down for interest on the cover. Not thinking too much about where they're going, I just want to get them stuck down fact that there was the gel matte medium should help them stay in place. Sometimes washi isn't actually sticky enough I find but uh, as I say because the, the matte medium was there it should stick fine to that. Now you're just going to take a bit more of the white paint and just to help blend some of that in just the way that I would with any normal kind of mixed media piece. I just want my cover to be a bit kind of blended in but to have some interest on it as well. I found this little bit of, I don't know if it was kind of a bit of deli paper, there was very little paint left on this. I think I've used every scrap of it that had any paint on it, so I'm just going to stick that down and over as well. Pulling a few threads out of a piece of burlap. I'm just going to stick these to the cover. Just adds texture, just adds interest. And then I just leave it to, to dry for a little while. So 
So once it's dry, that's it. And again, I'm I'm quite happy with the way it turned out. Uh, I I I was on the borderline of being embarrassed about doing a video of this sort simply because the construction of this was so kind of crude. But uh, given that you asked for it, I certainly wanted to to show it for you. So now have one completed journal and two ready to start working in. So I hope you found this useful, hope you've enjoyed it and uh, thanks to, to those of you that, that suggested I do a video. So as always, thanks for watching, hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.